welcome back. I'm your host, Jay Shub, and today we're going to cover the 2021 offseason going into 2022. Year one of the David Deal era is over with a successful 9-4 and four season, and now we will transition into year two. A lot to cover today. I decided to make it a quick-paced video, so let's get into it. So some coaching changes now in the Big Ten. You can see offensive coordinator Tony Peterson. He received a four-year extension after last year. The offense definitely improved a good bit. And Tony Peterson gets an extension and some other coaching changes here in the Big Ten. Not really much except head coach Mike Loxley of Maryland was fired and Jay Norvell will replace him. And other than that, just a few coordinator changes, some contract extensions, and not really much else to see as far as the coaching carousel in the Big Ten. So now we're going to go to players leaving. And you can see outside of all the seniors, Dee Dee Snyder, true freshman free safety. He's going to transfer to Ball State. Not really surprising if you think about it. He's buried on the depth chart. And with all the good, talented recruits coming in next year, you can't really blame Dee Dee for leaving. And Kendrick Green is Illinois' only projected draft prospect as of now he's projected to be a seventh round pick so we'll help to see Kendrick Green get drafted and all the other seniors graduating a lot of seniors that made impacts this season like Mike Epstein Jartavius Martin just to name a few Mike Epstein of course will be missed it'll be hard to replace his production next year but Illinois definitely is bright at the running back position moving forward Brian Hightower, Diane Navarro. The defensive line was stout. A lot of three seniors leaving, but Illinois expects to reload at that position. Kalen Tolson, who didn't play much this year, he leaves along with Delano Ware. And then, of course, Jartavius Martin graduates and Dee Dee Snyder transfers. And then Eddie Smith. So, outside of that, or Derek Smith, rather. So, outside of that, let's go see the draft results. And Kendrick Green gets drafted he goes in the seventh round just as projected so Kendrick Green the first Illini under David Deal to get drafted and we're glad to see him go in the seventh round I wish he went a little bit higher but Kendrick Green definitely deserved it he was a beast up front had a lot to do with Mike Epstein running the ball very successfully this season especially up the middle you can see other players here on different teams drafted Tanner Morgan went in the third round Rashad Bateman in the first Ohio State had Justin Fields and Sean Wade go in the first round. Wyatt Davis as well. Chris Olave went in the second. And David Bell, interestingly enough, went in the fourth round. Kind of surprising there. I thought he'd go a little bit higher. And outside of Dee Dee Snyder, no transfer requests for Illinois. So that's always a good thing. And now we will jump into recruiting. So, of course, this is the final chance for this coaching staff to recruit and get the last wave of commits. Brandon Jackson is one of Illinois' top targets at corner. They already landed Wyatt Anderson, and they're going to go really hard after Brandon Jackson. They're in a battle right now with Syracuse, Old Dominion in the mix as well. So we'll see if Illinois can get Brandon Jackson. They're putting a lot of effort into trying to get him. Patrick Coleman is basically all but committed at this point. So not much need to go hard there. Jermaine Mendoza as well. Adam Miller is a guy that probably Mike will, will go to Iowa, but Illinois is not really going to pursue him. So with Miami of Ohio and Ohio State lurking, even though Illinois is pretty comfortably in the lead, they're going to put some effort into Jermaine Mendoza here down the stretch and see if they can land him. Patrick Coleman, they consider a lock, so not much else to do there. Patrick Coleman will certainly be a huge upgrade, and he might actually be able to start in his first year. Mike Hughes, a defensive tackle, a late gem prospect that Illinois added to the board. With three defensive tackles leaving, it's best that Illinois probably goes and dips into the pool here a little bit at this position. Mike Hughes, it's going to be close. Arkansas is neck and neck with Illinois right now. Mike Hughes is out of Texas. So Illinois is going to really go hard after Hughes to try to get him to come up to Champaign. And then at running back, a couple new recruits added to the board. Chris Royal, he's sort of a power back. He's only offers right now are Illinois and Marshall. Pretty highly graded, but I think he's a little bit overgraded in my opinion. He doesn't offer much else than being maybe like a third down back or a goal line back. 
but you can see here Marshall is in the lead right now so Illinois will put some effort into him moving forward along with Corey Black who Illinois expects to commit but Kevin Griffin is the other running back that they added to the board recently and he's a little bit more balanced he can receive the ball as well he's got better speed a little bit better of an athlete and sort of like a running back that can do it all so there's some big schools on his list no surprise and Illinois is going to go after him see if they can get another running back along with Corey Black but these are just guys that Illinois added to the board late and we'll see if they can snatch one of them at the last second here and then at wide receiver we covered Kenny Rogers in the last recruiting update he was a late add to the board I think he is pretty underrated and Illinois is going to go after him pretty hard. Illinois is firmly in the lead, but you look at those big name schools, those big brands like Texas and Michigan are in his top list. So Illinois will go hard after him. And as of right now, Illinois has the 66th ranked recruiting class. Of course, this is not final. And they have all three stars right now. Of course, not nearly entirely accurate, I should say. So now we'll see who's committed. Mike Hughes commits to Illinois. That's a great pickup for the Illini. Illinois went really hard after him down the stretch, and he was a late great addition. Chris Royal committed to Marshall. Not really a surprise there. Kevin Griffin ended up going to Texas. Texas must have came in very late and offered him, and he ends up going there. Patrick Coleman commits. That's not a surprise. And Brandon Jackson commits to Syracuse. Wow. That was a little bit of a blind side. I did not expect Brandon Jackson to commit to Syracuse. Illinois went hard after him and they were in the lead for him. And he goes to Syracuse. Jermaine Mendoza and Corey Black commit. No surprises there. Kenny Rogers commits as well. That's also a great commit. Glad to see Kenny commit for Illinois. I think he will be an underrated prospect moving forward. They also land Ricky Mullins and Wesley Robinson. And you can see these other guys here. Illinois didn't really go too hard after them, so it's not a surprise to see those guys commit to other schools. But Illinois, outside of losing Brandon Jackson, has got to be pretty happy with their ads that they've gotten. And if you see there, Illinois has signed a top 25 recruiting class. So we'll see in just a minute where they rank. Brandon Jackson commits to Syracuse, and he barely committed. Look at that. That was a close battle. He stays on the East Coast and he commits to Syracuse. So Illinois still has wide Anderson. So that's something to be good about. He would have been a really good depth piece to add to the cornerback room. Patrick Coleman commits. That's an outstanding commit for Illinois. He might start in year one. Mike Hughes commits and it wasn't even close. So great job by the scouting department for Illinois to land Mike Hughes. Chris Williams commits to Wisconsin, but it doesn't really matter. Illinois got their fair share of defensive ends. Wesley Robinson, Joey Church, and Ryan Williams committed earlier. Corey Evans, a tight end. Illinois thought about going after him late, but they decided not to, and they pulled away. He goes to Buffalo, or to Colorado, I mean. Kenny Rogers commits, and it was not even close. The big schools overlooking Kenny Rogers, and Illinois gets him. I'm telling you, four-star wide receiver. I think he will be a good player down the road. Chris Royal goes to Marshall. Kevin Griffin, as we mentioned, went to Texas. So Illinois sort of threw a flyer on these running backs late, but did not get them. But they are happy with landing Corey Black, and the running back room is pretty deep. So that's not really too much to worry about there. And Illinois finishes right at number 25. They get 20 recruits, 17 three-stars, and three four-stars to finish 25th overall. So how about that? Illinois can say they have a top 25 recruiting class now, albeit barely. You can see here, sorted by star rankings. Of course, the star rankings are not entirely accurate. Illinois has a lot of three-star prospects that are very much highly graded than their star ratings. So we'll see how those guys pan out. But all in all, you have to be very excited about Illinois' recruiting class. Minnesota finishes in the 20th spot in the final rankings. Ohio State falls to 16. They got some good recruits, but not really as stout as you normally see out of coming into Ohio State. Clemson, Arkansas, Michigan falls to 11th in the recruiting rankings. 
kind of where they've been recently. And that's the only other Big Ten team that's on this board. Michigan, Ohio State, and Minnesota. So Illinois finishes with the fourth highest recruiting class in the Big Ten. How about that? Kentucky finishes with the fourth highest recruiting class. Wow. How about that? Not a name that you're usually used to seeing up there. Miami, Notre Dame, and of course Alabama per usual is up there at number one. But as I said, fourth highest recruiting class in the Big Ten. That's pretty good. Got to keep stacking those recruiting classes. Now moving to positional changes. Darren Robinson coming in as a true freshman. They're going to move him to free safety. So Darren Robinson will start. Cornelius Taylor, of course, could start as well along with Quincy Bolden. But they're going to move Darren Robinson to start at free safety. So a true freshman will start at the free safety position. Patrick Coleman moves to left outside linebacker so he can start. So Patrick Coleman is the highest grade left outside linebacker on the roster right now. Jermaine Mendoza on there as well. Ryan Mead is a junior. But Patrick Coleman will start as a true freshman as well. So there you go. So already a couple true freshman starters for next year on this defense. And now moving on to the training results. This is always important to look at. Marquez Beeson is going to be the highest graded player on Illinois' roster in going into 2022. Luke Ford, Isaiah Williams, and Virtus Brown up there as the top graded players on Illinois' team. Isaiah Williams, very good progression last year. He got five points boost to his rating. Matt Robinson up there as well. And it's good to see Deuce Span and Samari Collier also develop. Those guys will definitely be solid quarterbacks in the near future and I think Illinois is pretty set at quarterback for the time being with Isaiah Williams just being a junior and then you have Spann and Collier who are a sophomore and a freshman respectively. At running back Chase Brown really developed last year he got six point boosts to his rating. Chase Hayden as well. Jordan McRae also had a really good offseason as well. Reggie Love down there at the running back position as well so you can see why Illinois definitely is a no need to just keep stacking running backs they're already pretty set Reggie loves a sophomore and Jordan McRae is a redshirt freshman going into this year Jafar Armstrong will be wide receiver one he's the highest graded receiver Kamari Thompson definitely had a big season last year he's going to be the second primary receiver on this team Kyron Cumby will continue to be used out of the slot per usual he is just a beast in that role and he is turning into a superstar delavin campbell also progressed really well too he got six points to his rating so that's very good to see very good progression out of delavin campbell who got some experience last year returning punts patrick bryant and james frenchy jr younger guys buried on the depth chart there Jordan Slaughter at left guard. He will replace Kendrick Green. He is, will be a fifth-year senior. And Brody Weiscarver. Brody Weiscarver is just a redshirt freshman, but he's already a 77 overall. He was the best recruit last year coming into last year's recruiting class. So I expect Brody Weiscarver to be the starter in 2023. Virtus Brown also improved a lot. 88 graded right guard. Taking a look at the defensive tackle, Anthony Shipton. He will be defensive tackle number one next year. Jerzon Newton, Moses Okpala will also see some time. So those guys will all be new along the defensive line. And then at cornerback, also a very important position. They are very young, but now they have some depth. Marquez Beeson's a 91. Witherspoon is an 80. Daniel Everts and Prince Green getting a lot of playing time last year as true freshmen. They both improved by five points. So that's good to see coming out of that position where Illinois is very young. So now this was the very hardest part of the offseason. It always is, is cutting players. You have to cut the roster size down to 70. And you could see Illinois has got 76. So I had to make some tough decisions here as to who to cut. We'll start with Tavion Nicholson. He's kind of buried on the depth chart as a sophomore. And with all the young players coming in, especially in the secondary, you just had to get rid of Tavion Nicholson. Again, I didn't want to have to do this to anybody, but you have to cut, you have to cut somebody. 
Ricky Mullins was next. He was just a recruit, but being at linebacker and with all the linebackers Illinois got, had to let him go. Cooper Davis, a third year sophomore, same story here at left end, just kind of buried on the depth chart. A lot of young guys that'll surpass him at some point. And Illinois got a Juco wide receiver commit out of Larry, from Larry Tyler. And Illinois doesn't really need another receiver. I think they're fine a receiver and I didn't really recruit him. So we're going to let him go. And then at linebacker again, Kalen Villanueva unfortunately had to go. Again, I did not want to have to do this, but Joe George is going to be a freshman coming in behind him. There's also a lot of good freshmen at linebacker like Patrick Coleman. So Kalen Villanueva just had to be the odd man out. And lastly, this was arguably the hardest one to do. I was talking about the quarterback depth now, and I think Illinois... This was a mutual decision. Matt Robinson and Illinois are going to part ways. Matt Robinson will be cut in Illinois with Samari Collier and Deuce Span behind him. They want to go that direction and sort of give those younger guys some playing time if Isaiah Williams gets hurt. They are the future. So it was tough to part ways with Matt Robinson. But moving on now to custom conferences. So I wanted to add... A championship game to the Big 12. So I added Cincinnati and Houston to the Big 12 to make two divisions so that way the Big 12 can have a championship game and then to substitute to the American I put Army in there so the American now has 10 teams but the Big 12 will have two divisions and a conference championship game and of course I made sure that Oklahoma and Texas played each other every year as a protected rivalry and we'll get into those more in a minute with the Big Ten. You can see here the divisions in the Big 12. I made sure to put Oklahoma and Oklahoma State in the north, along with Cincinnati, Iowa State. And then I put all the Texas schools in West Virginia in the south. So now a new rule change with the Big Ten. This is also the case in real life. In 2022, the Big Ten is going to change their protected rivals and Penn State and all the other schools will have protected rivals and Penn State's new protected rival for the next six years is Illinois. Yes, this was a random drawing by the Big Ten and they will rotate this every six years. You can see here, Penn State will now play Illinois every year, Indiana and Purdue as usual. Michigan will play Nebraska, Michigan State, Minnesota, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Rutgers, Iowa, and then Maryland will play Northwestern as a protected rival with the other two cross-divisional opponents rotating every year so that's was a random drawing and that's the way it'll be so illinois will now play penn state every year instead of rutgers next up moving quickly redshirting players Corey black will be redshirted of course he's buried down there in the depth chart he won't be seeing the field for a long time so he will be redshirted same story here with kenny rogers and brandon hall they will both be redshirted illinois is pretty set at wide receiver at left tackle, where Illinois is very young, with Brevin Jones and Floor being there, they're going to redshirt their freshmen. Justin Cook will be redshirted. Nate Manson, I think almost every single recruit from this class is going to be redshirted, except for Patrick Coleman and Darren Robinson. Ryan Williams and Joey Church also will be redshirted. At defensive tackle, Mike Hughes sort of separate himself from the rest of the pack. He will be redshirted. Patrick Coleman over at left outside linebacker. He will not be redshirted. He will start there. And then Joe George, of course. Joe George will be redshirted. And Jermaine Mendoza. I actually did not choose to redshirt him. So Jermaine Mendoza will not be redshirted because he might actually be able to see the field. And at cornerback, with Wyatt Anderson being up there, he could play alongside Daniel Edwards and Prince Green there. He could have the potential to play, but to sort of separate himself from those guys, I was going to redshirt him. And then Tyler Strain, same situation. I thought about possibly cutting him, but I decided to keep him. And even though he's a true sophomore, he will be redshirted. So he will hopefully be given a chance to see the field later on in his career. 
And then at free safety, Darren Robinson, he will be starting as a true freshman. Cornelius Taylor, he might also see some playing time as a true freshman. So I did not redshirt him. So I, had to, I only redshirted Quincy Bolden. And the schedule, Illinois will do a home on home with Missouri. So that rivalry will be renewed. So we were going to play at Missouri to open the year. Northern Illinois will be a non-conference opponent, an in-state matchup there. We have Maryland, Arkansas State, another non-conference matchup. We go at Rutgers again, and then Penn State, our new cross-divisional opponent. Minnesota at home, Iowa at home, which I think was a little bit of a quirk because we're supposed to play them away this year. But you can see Iowa and Wisconsin, the home on homes did not change there for some reason. Nebraska away this year, Purdue at home. And yes, we'll be going to Wisconsin again, and then of course ending the year at Northwestern. So a, a little quirk there, but overall the schedule flips, so we'll get to see Illinois travel to different places, play different teams at home. And I'm very excited about this Missouri matchup. I think this will be very fun. Next year in 2023, we'll be playing Missouri in Champaign. So I think this will be a great non-conference, fun non-conference matchup to open the year. No cupcake this year to open up the season. We'll be getting right into it at Missouri. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I know I went really quickly, really fast pace. I could have really stretched this video out and went more in depth, but I decided to keep it shorter. And I think moving forward, going into next year, especially with the game videos, I'm going to start making those a little bit shorter. Maybe try to keep those within 30 minutes or some somewhere around that range. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And the next episode you will see will be a season two preview. It'll be sort of like I did for season one. We'll have a video going over covering the roster and previewing the schedule and what's to come in season two. And I think it's pretty fair to give myself a little bit of a break here. I won't go completely ghost for a while, but I think for maybe a week or two, I think I'm going to take a break from uploading and sort of naturally uh, take advantage of the soft spot in the dynasty where the off season i feel like it's a good time to take a little bit of a break so i won't be gone for too long i do have some stuff coming up in real life that may hinder me from uploading as frequently i really don't want to have that happen but uh, for right now i think it's good for me to take a little bit of a break so i hope to get you guys season two preview and once again thank you guys so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed all this content and as always feel free to comment love interacting with you guys and i'll see you in the next episode. Peace.